So for this 90 Sports and Soldier video, I want to take a look at Game 7 of the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals between the Chicago Bulls and the Indiana Pacers. The Bulls, they ultimately wound up winning the series in 7 games as neither team lost on their home court. As for this Game 7, Indiana, they had a chance to win. The Pacers during this era were known for their toughness and their defense, but for this game, there were 3 defensive possessions in the 4th quarter that caught my eye when I went back and watched this game again. These three possessions, they weren't Pacer-esque basketball on defense. So without further ado, on this first Pacers defensive possession that I want to take a look at, Indiana, they're up 77-74 with under 7 minutes to play. Derek McKee, he makes a nice defensive play to knock the ball out of Jordan's hands. This led to a jump ball, which would be between the 7'4", Rick Smith, and the 6'6", Michael Jordan. And with that said, Indiana obviously had a huge advantage and a great chance to gain possession with a three-point lead. But instead, the tip went to Scottie Pippen, Bulls ball, and later on with this possession, Jordan winds up taking a fadeaway jumper. Now I want to pause it here. Jordan's fadeaway jumper is going to hit the front of the rim and miss. But right here, there are five pacers, each with two feet in the paint, and only Chicago's Luke Longley is in the lane, and I'm not including Jordan who is fading away, but the pacers... They're in excellent position to get this rebound, but Luke Longley sneaks in without a body checking him and is able to tip the ball out. So now Pippen, he gets the ball. And what may be difficult is that after penetration or help defense and the ball quickly gets out to the perimeter, defenders may be scattered and out of position, which means communication is important. So here, Travis Best, I think he did the right thing by rotating and get into the open player who was one pass away. In this case, that player was Michael Jordan. And as you see Best, he's motioning and trying to communicate. Watch, Best again trying to communicate. Best is trying to communicate and motion for someone to get to his man Steve Kerr who is two passes away. But instead, McKee decides to stick to his man Michael Jordan, leaving Best man Steve Kerr with a wide open look and plenty of time to set up and tie it up with a three. For the second possession, tied up at 79, a little over five minutes left to play. Now Reggie Miller, he was guarding Pippen with McKee and Jordan. Now NBA fans from the 90s, they're not used to seeing Miller down low. And Scottie Pippen, he was one of the best rebounding small forwards in the 90s. But not a Luke Longley missed shot. Pippen isn't boxed out and he's able to out rebound and out hustle Miller. But then as the possession continues, Miller, he's still Garden Pippen. Now I'm going to pause it here as Tony Kukoc, he sets a normal screen. I think Miller, he was supposed to go underneath the screen and not trail because of where the screen was set. And typically for screens or pin downs, a person guarding the screener needs to leave space for his teammate to have more room to get through. But in this case, there isn't any room as Antonio Davis, who is Garden Kukoc, is not in good position. It may have been late recognizing the Kukoc screen, which resulted in not allowing space for Miller to get through. But at Davis, if he got to this position sooner, Miller would have been fine. But it didn't happen that way sooner. Perhaps Miller saw there wasn't any space, which may have led to Miller trying to go behind and trail Pippen. But nonetheless, Miller, he was screened, was slowed down greatly, which resulted in Miller being way behind Pippen. And Smits, he was left on an island trying to guard Pippen. Now for the last possession that I want to take a look at. There's another similar situation with Miller and Davis. Here, the Bulls are up by two with about two minutes left to play. And Indiana, they really need a stop. Now Chicago, they're going to run some pinch post action. And I'm just going to go ahead and just run the play. Pippen gets fouled with a chance to make a three-point play and give the Bulls a five-point lead. Now I talked previously that Antonio Davis needed to give Miller room to get through the screen. Now I'm going to put this play in slow motion and take a look at Antonio Davis as it looked like that Davis initially moved back with his right foot to give Miller some room but for some reason Davis seemed to have a quick change of mind and did not move his left foot which caused a collision between Miller and Davis. Now I have no idea what happened here between Miller and Davis but it was costly. Pippen missed a free throw but the Bulls they got the offensive rebound as Indiana got absolutely destroyed on the offensive glass in this game. As you see here with the graphics. And the Bulls, they didn't score, but they ran a lot of time off the clock. So the Bulls, they won 88 to 83. And when I went back and watched this game, these were three defensive possessions that really hurt Indiana. As a sports fan back then, I wasn't and I'm still not a fan of dynasties as I really wanted Indiana to win this game. I would have loved to see an Indiana Utah Finals, although there may have been sports writers who ooze out elitism, whining and crying 
if it would have been Pacers Jazz in the finals. But if you're a sports fan back then and wanted to see Jordan and the Bulls in the finals, that's cool and I understand that position. But as for this 98 Pacers team, this was probably their best shot in winning an NBA championship, perhaps more so than the 2000 team. And comment below if you feel this way or maybe you thought another Pacers team had a better shot of winning a title like their 94 team. But anyways, this was a tough loss as Indiana did not play typical Indiana Pacers basketball during the second half of this fourth quarter and I really wanted this team to make it to the NBA Finals but instead it was Chicago making it to the NBA Finals then winning their sixth title in eight years. Real quick I just want to thank all those who have supported 90 Sports Nostalgia. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share and check out the links below for Patreon and merch. Thank you so much. Three defensive possessions that hurt the Indiana Pacers during Game 7 of the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals.